It's that time of year again, where a stateless smuggler breaks into our homes and eats all of our cookies and milk. Although, some would say instead that he brings joy and gifts. But have you ever stopped to wonder, just who is Santa Claus? Where did he come from? Is he really just a jolly old man with a penchant for cookies and milk? Or is he in fact the most successful undercover operative the North Pole has ever seen? Let's take a journey through time and uncover the rich tapestry of stories that led to the creation of one of the world's most beloved figures. Our story begins not in the snow-laden North Pole, but in the sun-soaked land of Myra, present-day Turkey, during the 3rd century CE. Enter Saint Nicholas of Myra. Long before the commercialised image of Santa Claus with reindeer and elves, there was a devout Christian bishop known for his generosity and acts of kindness. Now Saint Nicholas wasn't just a legend, he was a real historical figure. Stories abound about his good deeds. One of the most famous tales speaks of a poor man with three daughters. Without dowries for marriage, the daughters faced a bleak future. But mysteriously, on three different occasions, a bag of gold appeared in their homes, saving them from destitution. Rumours spread that Nicholas, wishing to help but desiring to remain anonymous, had thrown the gold bags through an open window. While most of what we know about Nicholas come from stories and traditions, archaeological evidence provides another layer of validation. In 2017, archaeologists in Antalya, Turkey, claim they may have discovered the tomb of St. Nicholas, hidden beneath the temple. St. Nicholas's reputation as a secret gift giver made him the patron saint of children. His feast day on December 6th became a day of celebration, especially in medieval Europe. Over time, his stories melded with ancient pagan traditions and other regional myths, gradually shaping the foundations of the Santa Claus we recognize today. As Christianity spread throughout Europe, so too did the stories of St. Nicholas. From the icy fjords of Scandinavia to the dense forests of Germany, the legend of this benevolent bishop was embraced and adapted by different cultures. From the warm and sunny lands of Myra, our journey now takes us north, into the heart of Europe, where ancient traditions and myths awaited the tales of St. Nicholas. In the frosty realms of Scandinavia, the Norse had their chief god Odin. A figure of many facets, Odin was often portrayed as a long-bearded, older man, much like the St. Nicholas we're familiar with. But it's during the Yule season, a pagan winter festival where we find the most striking resemblances. During Yule, Odin was said to lead a great hunting party through the skies, an event known as the Wild Hunt. He rode Sleipnir, his eight-legged horse. Now does an old man travelling through the skies during winter on a creature remind you of someone? And here's where it gets even more interesting. Children would often leave their boots filled with straw or carrots for Sleipnir to eat. In return, Odin would leave behind gifts or candy, a tradition that undoubtedly echoes the stockings we hang by our fireplaces today. In nearby Iceland, the festive season introduced a unique set of characters, the Yule Lads. <laughs> Originating from Icelandic folklore, these 13 mischievous trolls, each with their own distinct personality, would come down from the mountains one by one, starting December 12th to either reward or play tricks on children. From door slammer who loved to bang doors, to sausage swiper sneaking off with, well, sausages, their antics were often a far cry from the benevolent acts of Saint Nicholas. As we travel south to the Netherlands and Belgium, we encounter Sinterklaas, a figure derived directly from Saint Nicholas. However, instead of a sleigh, Sinterklaas arrives by boat from Spain and then mounts a white horse to distribute gifts. In England, Father Christmas evolved as a symbol of good cheer and the spirit of Christmas rather than a gift bringer. Clad in green and originating from ancient pagan traditions, this festive figure was a personification of the holiday spirit, representing merriment, feasting and goodwill. His primary role was to ensure the Yuletide celebrations were hearty and high-spirited, especially during the darkest and coldest time of the year. But the ride wasn't always smooth for this emblem of festivity. During the mid-17th century, Puritans in England came to power. They viewed Christmas with disdain, seeing it as a wasteful festival that encouraged drunkenness and indulgence. In the 1640s, traditional Christmas celebrations were banned, 
and Father Christmas, as the figurehead of these revelries, was thrust into the centre of a cultural conflict. Pamphlets and plays from that era depict Father Christmas defending himself and the values of celebration, merriment and community against the Puritan assault. In these depictions, he was often presented as a symbol of joy and continuity, arguing for the value of tradition and the human need for celebration. As the centuries rolled on, the figure of Father Christmas began to merge with other European interpretations, particularly the Dutch Sinterklaas. By the Victorian era, he was increasingly shown as a figure who brings gifts to children. From the banks of the Mediterranean to the fjords of Scandinavia and the bustling markets of Belgium and Germany, the legacy of St. Nicholas underwent a transformation like no other. But how do these European traditions meld into the modern Santa Claus? Now for that, we need to look westward to the melting pot of cultures, America. From the old world to the new. As Europeans crossed the vast Atlantic, they brought them tales, traditions, and the festive spirits of Yule, Sinterklaas, and so much more. And in the cultural melting pot of America, these traditions began to blend and transform. 1822 witnessed the turning point. Clement Clark Moore penned a poem for his children titled A Visit from St. Nicholas, more popularly known today as The Night Before Christmas. This poem introduced many to a jolly old elf, his sleigh, and eight reindeer. Moore's description brought to light a Santa Claus with twinkling eyes, rosy cheeks, and a round belly. Soon after, the immensely talented illustrator Thomas Nast visualised Santa Claus for Harper's Weekly. Before revolutionising the image of Santa Claus, Thomas Nast was already a towering figure in American journalism. Born in Germany in 1840, Nast moved to New York City as a child. He rapidly rose to prominence as a political cartoonist working for Harper's Weekly. Nast's illustrations were more than mere drawings. They were powerful political statements. His work played a pivotal role during the Civil War era, using his art to passionately support the Union cause. Nast is even credited with popularising the donkey and elephant as symbols for the Democratic and Republican parties, respectively. His ability to blend sharp political commentary with engaging visuals made him one of the most influential cartoonists of his time. But it was his reimagining of Santa Claus that left an indelible mark on popular culture. Beginning in the 1860s, Nast started a series of Christmas illustrations for Harper's Weekly. Nast's Santa was a departure from the saintly bishop or the jolly elf of earlier depictions. He gave us a round, cheerful man adorned in a suit with a bushy white beard, a figure both merry and authoritative. Nast also introduced novel elements to the lore of Santa Claus, the idea of his workshop at the North Pole, his detailed list of children both naughty and nice, and even his wife, Mrs. Claus. These elements, now integral to the Santa Claus mythos, were largely the creation of Mast's fertile imagination. His vision of Santa Claus not only captured the spirit of Christmas, but also resonated with the American public's growing appetite for holiday traditions. Yet the imagery of Santa Claus took another twist in the 20th century. The Coca-Cola Company, in an effort to boost winter sales, commissioned Haddon Sundblom to create a series of images of Santa Claus. Sundblom's Santa was robust, cheerful, and full of life, depicted enjoying a coke during the Christmas season, of course. This commercial campaign, though rooted in sales, played a significant role in shaping the modern visual imagery of Santa Claus. In the heart of America, Santa's image continued to evolve, incorporating elements from various cultures, stories, and traditions. He was no longer just a bishop from Myra, a god from Norse mythology, or a mischievous elf. In the American cultural mosaic, Santa Claus became a symbol of generosity, hope, and the magic of the holiday season. As we deck the halls, sing carols, and await the sound of reindeers on rooftops, we're participating in a tradition centuries in the making. A blend of stories from across the globe, Santa Claus, a figure born from the tales of saints, gods, and folklore, has found a home in the hearts of millions. A reminder that no matter our origins, the spirit of giving, love, and joy is universal. So as you hang your stockings and leave out cookies this year, remember the rich tapestry of tales and culture that brought Santa Claus down your chimney. Happy Holidays.